So welcome everybody. I'm delighted that you're here. You may see that I'm in a different setting than usual. I'm, I'm out at a little cottage I go to sometimes. So I got, I tried to get some little solstice -y holiday lights and stuff here and hope, hope they're, hope they're showing up. <clears throat> Most of you have been here before. Is there anybody who's new tonight who's never been here? Could you just raise your hand? Hi, Laura. Yes, Laura from Point Townsend, I bet. Hi, nice to see you. Anybody else new tonight? Um, Sharon, hi, and uh, who, Sierra Knight, and person with Sierra Knight. <laughs> hi. <laughs> great, great. And then on page two, would, would you mind raising your hands one more time? Because I could only, um, I couldn't see every page. Gotcha, Sharon. I guess I got everybody. Okay. All right. Very, very welcome. So most of you know that um, we ask you not to chat during the songs or poems because it distracts the artist and the artist gets lost and can't remember her words and that's uncomfortable for me. So please don't chat during the songs. You can chat with each other during the in between and you're all muted because unfortunately Zoom hasn't figured out how to get us all singing at the same time. They're so good at so many things, but they, um, <clears throat> they, they haven't figured out this singing together, but we have figured out how to make it work for us in our little homes, in our little rooms, singing away. How many of you feel like your voice has improved since COVID from the amount of singing you've been doing in your home privately, right? Yeah, yeah, well done, well done. Mine has, my voice is in much better shape than it was two years ago. I haven't sung this often since I was a young touring thing. So, okay, let us sing. I'm going to start with, as I said, the night has got kind of some intertwining themes. We've got solstice, dark and light. We've got a little birthday thing. So me reflecting on my gratitude for my life and gratitude for some of my great teachers and elders and mentors and spending just a little time on some of the people that have shaped me, some of the artists who have shaped and influenced me, some of the spiritual teachers who have deeply, deeply shaped and influence me. I think birthdays are such a wonderful time to reflect on what made me me? How did I get here day one? And how did I get here at age 71 turning 72? How did I become this person? There's so many people to thank. There's so many animals to thank. There's so many living systems to thank. So that's tonight to me, seeing, I think is a lot about gratitude. That seems to be where I'm landing. So this is a song that I wrote a <clears throat> number of years ago, number of years ago. And oh, you know what I did? I just made a boo-boo, sorry. I have to do one little thing here to get my lyrics up. Unfortunately, as I move into these wonderful wis wisdom years, my memory years are not as good as my wisdom. I am wiser than I am somebody who remembers lyrics. So if I had to choose, I think I'd take wisdom. <laughs> All right, in a circle of fire, Liz, my faithful cohort, has put the words or the link to the words in the chat. Sing along. You don't even need them really because it's an echo song. A lot of you know this. Here's how it goes. I sing in a circle of fire and you sing in a circle of fire. That's your, my echo. Since I can't hear you, you have to open your mouths and really move your lips so I believe you. I believe that you're singing. Hi, Toby. I'm glad you made it. Wow. So it goes like this. In a circle of fire, in a circle of fire, in a circle of light, in a circle of light. And then I sing alone. Come together, come to sing, come to this night. And you sing to this night. Right? Good. And then I sing, come on sisters, come on brothers, climb aboard and hang on tight. We're taking flight, we're taking flight in a circle of light, in a circle of light. This song wakes you up and keeps you on your toes because you got to remember when to come in. The cool thing about being alone in your home, though, is that if you come in at the wrong time when you're not supposed to come in, nobody knows. Isn't that great? It's a no fault experience. All right, let's do, let's go on. In a circle of light, in a circle in a circle of peace leave your troubles at the door and be released be released i know every heart is hungry come on welcome to the feast of harmonies harmonies in a circle of peace in a circle of peace i can see that you are doing this in a circle of peace in a circle of peace in a circle of friends circle of friends 
can lay your burden down and start again, start again. No more whispering in the shadows. Come on, join the angel band. Lend a hand, lend a hand in a circle of friends. That's right. Wow, you sound great somehow. I know you do. In a circle of friends, in a circle of, in a circle of songs. Every frog, every sparrow, sing along. If they told you to be silent, you gotta show them they were wrong. It'll make you strong, make you strong in a circle of song. Yeah, that's right. In a circle of song, in a circle of song, in a circle of fire, in a circle of fire. Catch that spark, set you blazing with desire, with desire. Every voice can move a mountain, every breath can be a choir, and we'll conspire in a circle of fire, in a circle of fire. That's right, and now we're back to the top. In a circle of fire, in a circle of fire, in a circle of light, in a circle of light. Come together, come to sing, come to this night. We're taking flight, taking flight in a circle of light. Gonna make things right, gonna make things right in a circle of light. Yes, we are. Gonna sing all night in a circle. Sing it with me. Oh. you you know the energy comes through it's such a it's such an amazing thing really the energy comes through even though the voices aren't so good to see all of you thanks for coming tonight i think i'm hitting the front edge of the busy busy season having a birthday on december 23rd usually sucks i mean when i was little my mother would forget it was my birthday until the last minute because she was so busy buying presents for the three or four or five other kids, depending on what year it was. And she'd remember on my birthday morning and she'd go in the closet where she hid all the presents and she'd wrap up the, my Christmas presents and make the birthday presents. And then I think she'd run out and get me more presents for Christmas, poor woman. And one of my dear friends who I don't think is here tonight sent me a great cartoon. Oh, she is here. Jude, this is the greatest. I think it was you. No, it was my family who sent it. Okay, forget it. Wise men, the three wise men with all their gifts are standing in front of the stable and they're looking in at the little baby in the manger and they're saying, now remember, these gifts are for your birthday and Christmas. So as I said to my friend, well, at least I'm in good company. <clears throat> so I have a Solston poem that I think I read every year, and I just, it's just a really nice poem. I don't actually know who wrote it. So the shortest day came, and the year died. And everywhere down the centuries of the snow-white world came people singing, dancing, to drive the dark away. They lighted candles in the winter trees. They hung their homes with evergreen. They burned beseeching fires all night long to keep the year alive. And when the New Year's sunshine blazed awake, they shouted, reveling through all the frosty ages. You can hear them echoing behind us still. Listen, all the long echoes sing the same delight. This shortest day, as promise wakens in the sleeping land, they carol, feast, give thanks, and dearly love their friends and hope for peace. And so do we here, now, this year, and every year. Welcome, you all. Ah, but before, before we turn too quickly toward the light, I really want to honor the darkness. This song is one of my favorite songs in the whole world. It was written by Joanne, I mean, sorry, by Lisa Hubble, another Berkeley gal. And um, 
it reminds us of the gift and of darkness and how much we need the gifts of darkness. See what you think. The chorus is really simple. Darkness calls. Darkness calls. Darkness calls. Darkness calls. Try that with me. So let's take a few minutes to bring that 
blessing of darkness into our hearts more fully with a just a little bit of of quiet quietness together call it meditation call it what you will um do we always do this to just arrive maybe a little more fully when wherever you've come from whatever the day has brought you here you are so if you want to you can close your eyes just rest your body in a way that feels alive but relaxed and just take a few deep breaths to just kind of wake things up inside a little bit we've been breathing deeply with the singing there's just nothing like singing to get the breathing fuller opener more open This is such a, a blessed invitation to come inside this body, to lower our defenses, to see what I've been hiding, mm, to still my mind and listen. In this very fast paced society and very fast paced season, when the, the natural world hibernates, the natural world goes into the dark and sleeps. All that fruitfulness of the summer says goodbye and falls to the ground and goes back home to renew again. So here in this moment, we can go home, we can come home that sweet, dark mystery inside of us. That breathing, moving, blood flowing, heart pumping, all that beautiful life in the darkness of our bodies. And with some deeper breaths, just let's all just breathe in a sense of gratitude for this very moment, this moment of aliveness and this moment of togetherness. For what this year has brought us, we know, I, sh I can't help but know that we've all had hard times we've all had some joys we've probably all had a lot of growth grateful for it all and just let your mind go for a moment to the beings that you're grateful for the humans that you love or work with or are friends with the animals, whether they're in your home or just in your heart, that populate our world with so many energies of bird song and cat meow and the roars of nature. How blessed we are to have these living beings with us on this living planet. And gratitude for any of your teachers, mentors, inspiration, lives that have touched yours and made a difference. And if you brought a candle tonight, this would be a lovely time to hold it up to the screen and shine it out for each other. Remembering that the miracle of light is coming, that this is the kind of 
light that we can ha we have in our hearts, whether the sky is dark or the times are dark, there is this light in our hearts that shines eternal. Light is returning, even though this is the darkest hour, no one can hold back the dawn. Many of you know this, it's in your lyrics. Try it out with me. Light is returning. Even though this is the darkest hour, no one can hold back the dawn. Let's keep it burning. Let's keep the light of hope alive. Make safe our journey through the storm. One planet, one planet is turning. Circle on her path around the sun, Earth Mother is calling her children home. Light is returning, even though this is the darkest hour, no one can hold back the dawn. Let's keep it burning. Let's keep it burning. Let's keep the light of hope alive. Make safe our journey through the storm. One planet, one planet is turning. Circle on her path around the sun. Earth Mother is calling her children home. Yeah, I see you moving. You could be clapping. You could be thumping your thighs. This is a dance. You could be dancing. Light is returning. Even though this is the darkest hour, no one can hold back the dawn. Let's keep it. Let's keep it burning. Let's keep the light of hope alive. Make safe our journey through the storm. One planet is turning, circling her path around the sun. Earth Mother is calling her children home, her children home. Her children home. Light is returning. Thank you, Charlie Murphy. Brilliant, brilliant song by a brilliant man. Gone, gone way too soon. Oh, it was wonderful. Well, it wouldn't be a no better time to sing evening if I didn't read you a poem by Pastor Stephen. <laughs> My very favorite, favorite poet, and many of you know this. And if you don't, he, he sent his unfoldinglight.net, unfoldinglight.net. And I think that, um, I think Liz is going to put that in the, in the chat. Anyway, he's an amazing Christian minister who writes amazing poetry. So this is one for the season and the going into the dark. <clears throat> it's called Trust. A thin skin of ice on the pond comes and goes, an eye opening and closing. Soon it will tire and stay closed. The cattails rattle along the shore. The red twig dogwood has nothing to say. Sedges have bowed their heads for the long prayer service. There is no fear here. Little creatures and some great ones have gone in. The oaks hold their secrets tightly. The last geese row patient across the pond of sky. They know where they are going. The squirrels trust their hordes. The nuthatches, the finches know where to find things. The chickadees know their song. I believe 
we can learn to trust what is to come and what will come after. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. So I was born into this season of dark, December 23rd. I was my mother's third child, my father's as well. And um, it, it was a, I've pondered the timing of my birth and the vibe that surrounded me because astrology certainly believes that when we come into this earth, all these forces are at play in the universe that create a particular atmosphere, a particular experience that impacts us from very young, very young. And I've, I really have come to believe that on many levels, may, may, ast astrology aside, you know, I know that my mother's mother was dying when I was in the womb, and I know that she died three months after I was born. So I think there was another layer of darkness that surrounded me, you know, and started my life in a particular direction, which was not a, a sad direction or a, um, a negative direction, but it was a searching direction. It was a seeking and there was a seriousness and a kind of a, a a quest that I'm sure I'm not the only person in this in this meeting this group that um, feels like you've been on a quest most of your life. But we we come in here, you know, and it's kind of chaos because everything's already set in motion. Our parents already have a relationship based on their parents and based on who they are growing up, and we're plunked into this situation that's already happening. Right. It's not like everybody's brand new in that moment. We are brand new to something that's already going on. That can be a little chaotic. <laughs> it can be a little puzzling and confusing. And um, in my doula work, I, I've, I've seen a couple of babies come in uh, to young women that I've cared for very much. And um, their lives were not easy. These were single moms. Um, they were low income moms. And, you know, I, I, I just think, boy, these babies come in and they get what they get. Just like we all get what we got, right? So this is a little song I have never sung in public before. So give me a lot of grace. I wrote it two years ago, right after the birth of my first young mom, first young single mom, um, her baby. And I really love this song, but for some reason I've been shy to sing it because it's about this mystery, this chaos we call life. So it's called Welcome to Life. Welcome to the great unknown Welcome to the magic show Welcome to the lights and sound Pretty soon you'll know your way around Welcome to life Breathing unfamiliar air Welcome to skin and bone And touch and tongue It's a little strange, it's a little fun, and before you know it, you're gone. Welcome to the blink of an eye in a hurricane. Welcome to life. Welcome to life. Mama's gonna love you long. Mama's gonna love you strong. Mama doesn't know the ropes Got nothing but her mama hopes Welcome to love that hurts And love that heals Welcome to the kind and cruel And tender and foolish and real Crawling in the mud Flying toward the sun and before you know it, you're the one saying welcome to the blink of an eye in a hurricane. Welcome to life. Welcome to life. Welcome to life. Hey, welcome aboard. Welcome to the blessed and cursed way too long and way too short
God is just another name for standing dry inside the rain. God is what is breathing you when you're drowning in that sea of blue. Welcome to some big dance you'll never quite learn. Still, it's your one big chance to walk through fire, find out it burns. It's a little joke, it's a big dream, and no matter how it hurts, you don't want to leave. It's the blink of an eye in a hurricane. Sing it with me. Welcome to life. Sing it again. Welcome to life. Walking through the fire, drowning in the truth. It's the pits of hell, and it's heaven on earth. It's a blink of an eye in a hurricane. It's the blink of an eye in a hurricane. Blink of an eye in a hurricane. Welcome to life. Welcome to life. Mm. Thank you. It was really nice to sing that with you. Did you like it? <laughs> I really like it. It makes me very happy to sing it. Welcome to life. So I came from two parents. What do you know about that? And um, I was trying to find their wedding picture because I wrote this poem that I'm going to share with you that was inspired by their wedding picture. It's back in the, where did they get married? The 40s, early 40s, so it was during the war. And um, well, the poem will just tell you all about it, but I so wish I could show it to you because you would see exactly what I'm talking about. But it's all right, this is my tribute. This is beginning the honoring section of the evening. Um, and I wanna honor my parents first and foremost, not only for having the good, the smarts to get the, the particular egg and sperm together that created me because I'm glad I'm me, but because they hung in there and they made a life together and it was very difficult in some ways. Mar I think marriage, all relationships are pretty difficult if you stay long enough. So anyway, here's my tribute to these wonderful people, Margaret and David Rose. The title is My Father Married a Tall Woman. You see why I wanna show you the picture. <laughs> My father married a tall woman. I see her rising above him, radiant in her satin draped splendor, stately and poised in her shining moment. My father, scrubbed and pink in his dark suit, looks like a schoolboy caught in a prank, big grin, big ears, awkwardly pleased with himself. He has landed the catch of Orono, Maine, 1944, that new pretty tall gal running the YWCA. A, Sa a Seattle transplant, exotic and rare. And she knows it too. Though with most able-bodied young men off to war, pickings were slim and her clock was ticking. My dad, the town minister, was also a rare local breed, educated, a bit worldly, raised on the Eastern seaboard from good New England liberal stock. And so it was that love was declared, promises made, vows spoken, cake cut and crumbled into each other's mouths with giggles and the sensual licking of frosted fingers. A marriage of convenience and opportunity and young erotic fancy. Mom confided in me much later that while there was affection and attraction, she questioned whether he was the one. But they wanted to have sex and marriage was the only proper route to that urgent destination. So marriage it was. And knowing what I know now, I see in that iconic wedding portrait the seeds of what was to come, the ascendance of the male into his socially sanctioned dominance, the female receding into babies and domestic maintenance, and the formidable ever-present role of minister's wife with the ladies' aid meetings, teaching Sunday school, and three little girls in homemade frilled dresses seated in the front row while daddy led the faithful from the high pulpit. 
I see the hopeful innocence in their newly wed eyes and the inevitable dissonances and disappointments that lay in waiting as a tall woman with big dreams and capacities schooled by her father in stories of famous women leaders hitched her fate to a short eager insecure playful charming visionary unhappy man and they launched into the post-war 50s five children heartbreak drifting apart but solidly committed to till death do us part, as it did after 65 years of wedded complexity, failure, and devotion. So here's to you, brave pilgrims, you radiant goddess, you puckish eccentric man of faith, you beloved parents whom I adored and absorbed all you had to give into this mottled kaleidoscope of an offspring flashes of you glinting off my broken pieces we live on we live on thank you makes me cry ah this is what a song i wrote after my after they died <clears throat> sing along chorus it's in your words liz has put the link to the words in the chat if you didn't get them in the in the email i won't be long for this world i won't be long for this world but i belong to this world is it wrong to love Just a little girl riding high up on his shoulders. And to this day, I hear him say, Love someone. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I should have kept working at the, looking at the lyrics. I'm going to start again. My daddy's gone from this world. But every time I think of him, I'm just a little girl riding high up on his shoulders. And to this day, I hear him say, light someone's way. We're here to help each other. Thank you, Daddy. I won't be long for this world, but I belong to this world. Is it wrong to love this world when it won't be long till I'm gone from this world? My mama dwells beneath my skin. When I see her face, hear her voice, I'm whole again. I can't imagine a world where she is gone. You'll see her smile inside my eyes. You'll hear her voice inside my song. Let's sing it. I won't be long for this world, but I belong to this world. Is it wrong to love this world? one is for my life partner who I'm also so grateful for and my, my sister, my brother, my son, my family. So blessed. You and me are tender friends. Two old trees grown together, bound by root and limb, battered by storms and blessed by laughter. And one may fall, the other stand still giving shade to the ones come after let's sing i won't be long for this 
this world But I belong to this world Is it wrong to love this world When it won't be long till I'm gone from this world It won't be long till I'm gone Thank you. Wow. You know, it feels different singing that at 71, almost two, than it did at 61 or so when I wrote it. You know, I just feel like when I say I won't be long, it's like, yeah, it's getting kind of short. <laughs> but here I am. And what a perfect, perfect lead in into this next section of honoring my elders and mentors. They're not all my elders, actually, but my mentors and teachers. Um, there have been many, and they have been profoundly, profoundly impactful and shaped the woman that you see today. Um, and I'm going to start with uh, a woman who may be here tonight. Is Joanna here tonight, Joanna Macy? I can't, I don't know if I can see you. I know she was going to try to be here. Would whoever, if anyone is with Joanna on screen, could you wave I want to just keep waving for a minute. It may be that she couldn't make it. She just got home from being in the hospital with pneumonia. So it may just be a little too much for her tonight. And there is one Joanna, but it's not Joanna Macy. Yeah. I, yeah. Welcome all Joannas, but Joanna Macy is the one I'm looking for right now. I'm going to check my email real quick and see if her friend had any trouble getting in because sometimes that happens. Oh, no, everything looks fine. Okay, well, if they make it, they'll make it. But nonetheless, I am honoring Joanna because Joanna Macy is a woman who has influenced literally millions of people. And she wrote a groundbreaking book back in the, what, what shall we say, 70s probably, called Fear, Despair and Empowerment in the Nuclear Age. How many of you know that book or know Joanna's work? Raise your, raise your hand. Yes, many of you know her work. She was a, what she was doing was integrating political insight and addressing the so-called political world, which is actually the living world that we all live in. There's no separation between us and the political world that's going on. But she brought the, the insights of therapy and the insights of Buddhism and systems theory, all these integrative practices that bring the heart into the picture. And she wrote this amazing book and created these workshops that were despair and empowerment workshops where she led people through a process of facing the fear of nuclear annihilation head on really facing and sharing and talking about and dwelling on the reality of what would happen to the world and we could just substitute climate destru dis destruction now for what what she was doing then. And then she would have this circle of grieving, and it was powerful. People, we, we, I was one of them, would come into a small circle. Others surrounded us and kind of were a holder, holding space. And we would wail and sob and grieve and shout and stamp and let out whatever needed to be let out to express the what we really felt about this horrible vision that was being we were all holding together and her belief and her dis her discovery was that when people fully feel the truth of what they need to feel no matter how horrible whether it's remembering childhood trauma or whatever that there is this amazing healing on the other side that is actually filled with energy joy purpose and a determination to act and that's why she called it despair and empowerment in the nuclear age so today, Joanna's in her 90s, and she is beloved by Gen Z people, millennials. She is, of all the elders I know, I don't know anybody who has a following like she does of people under 30 or 35. Um, so isn't that beautiful? I mean, who could ask for more, you know? And so she is one of those old trees that is still standing and providing shade for the ones come after. And Joanna, wherever you are tonight, I love you. I can't even put into words what you have given me, what you've taught me. And I want to sing the song 
a song that is the title song for this music series that I started doing when COVID started, No Better Time to Sing. And this song is called No Better Time to Love. And I can't put my finger on how Joanna is in this, except that somehow I could never have written this song if I hadn't sat at her feet, cried at her feet, um, and read her books and listened to her talks. So let's sing together. I know many of you know this. This is kind of our theme song, No Better Time to Love. Shine a light across the darkness Like the moon across the waves In this midnight of our journey Show the world a shining face Even earth and sky can Ocean deep, the stars above. All that we know is bound to crumble. There is no better time to love. Sing that last line with me. There is no better time to love. The news will never tell the story we have to learn it on our own reach for the truth you can believe in the time is urgent take it slow when even faith and hope lie broken not enough. We face the dark with eyes wide open. There is no better time to love. Sing that with me. There is no better time tell the story but we have known it all along and in the silence we remember and note by note we find the song so shine a light across the darkness It's enough. We're holding hands with eyes wide open. There is no better time to love. Give me your hand. Give me your hand with eyes wide open. And I'm just, I'm still kind of thinking about, is Joanna here? Is she trying to get in? I remember nobody can unmute. So Joanna, if you and your friends are here, just put something in the chat. Let us know that you're here and we'll, we'll let you unmute. I just would love to have you say a word. Um, anyway, precious, precious woman. Um, and I also want to, uh, of course, say a word or two about Thich Nhat Hanh who profoundly, profoundly impacted my life in about 1987, after I'd moved to California and I went to a retreat for artists that he was leading. Many of you know of his work. Many of you know my stories about him. I did a whole evening about my journey with him after he died in January of last year. 
So we are coming up on the first year. And, you know, he's someone who so believed in the, uh, the Buddha Dharma and therefore in the friendliness of impermanence, that impermanence is our friend. And the fact that we bloom, wither, and die is a beautiful thing. And he always talked about that impermanence in the most positive way. And, you know, he wrote a song and he wrote a poem called In My Two Hands, or he called it For Warmth. And I'm, I'm actually not going to sing it tonight. I, I know some of you want me to, but I've sung it a few times and I'm, I'm just not quite up to it. I'm having a little arthritis in my hands and it's a little bit of a difficult song to play, but um, I just want to just express my gratitude for him introducing me to the Dharma and to the practice of mindfulness, the, pra the wisdom of impermanence and no kind of solid lasting self, you know, what it's, it's weird how we just wake up one day and we're one person and by the end of the day, we're kind of someone else, you know, I woke up, I, I, you know, woke up uh, to yesterday, I woke up a happy, happy Buddha uh, by two in the afternoon, I was a very depressed Buddha. And by, you know, about 8pm, I was sort of back to being a well, I guess it's okay, Buddha, you know, and that's, that's, and that's all in one day, you know, so um, thank you, Thich Nhat Hanh, for the gifts you've given the world the world and the amount of peace that you've brought to the world from the Vietnam War work that you did on on healing that stopping that and healing it and on into the present so I just also want to say I want to jump for a minute to thinking about my where, how I fell in love with folk music because oh I got to turn the heat on too I'm freezing hold on a minute uh, there we go it's going to be noisy for a minute because I, I fell in love with folk music first because I had a, a little guitar. My dad had a little guitar. He could play any instrument a little. And I could play piano and violin. And there was this old funky guitar and I started picking around on it. And I was about 10, maybe, yeah, around 10 or so. And um, uh, my Aunt Barbara, who wore cowboy boots and had a really short haircut, and wasn't married and this is like 1950s so guess what i know about my aunt barbara that i didn't know then um and she played guitar so she and she could stand on her hands so that woman walked on water in my world so she taught me a few chords and i was off and running and do you remember back in those days there was like the chad mitchell trio and the limelighters, these kind of white boys doing these tight harmonies, and Peter, Paul, and Mary. And, um, but my, Joan Bias was really my, I think, the first one that really caught my attention. And I started imitating those child ballads and learning how to finger pick and on and on. So, but after I started playing, and, and, and when I was 11 or 12, you know, started singing these Joan Baez -y songs and these Chad Mitchell trio songs. My sisters, I have to thank my older sisters, Mary and Debbie, because it there's a lot of good things about having older sisters. And one of them is that they bring the culture down to you. So they were kind of, my older sister was off to college and she was bringing, you know, music that I wasn't hearing at home, you know. And my other sister, my, my next younger, was, um, was also bringing home Simon and Garfunkel and Phil Oaks and Eric Anderson and so forth. But somehow, somebody brought home Mississippi John Hurt, and that opened the doors to the black singers of the, the folk tradition. Mississippi John Hurt, Big Bill Brunzi, Ma Rainey, Bessie Smith. I was riveted. I was riveted by these voices and that style. L Libba Cotton, and Cotton, learning how to pick Cotton style, Elizabeth Cotton. So just homage and great thanks and great praise to all of you because you inspired me to become a folk singer and then a songwriter, Bob Dylan, I should have mentioned Dylan, of course, but all that political singing that was going on, oh my goodness. Um, so I thought I would sing you the first song, not the first song I wrote, because I wrote my first song when I was about 10 or 11 or 12, I think, and it was a peace song. It was an anti-nuclear peace song. I mean, I, I knew who to imitate. I mean, I imitated the best, you know, Phil Oaks, Bob Dylan, uh, Judy Collins, you know, everybody was writing and creating these, these songs of peace and justice, and I was right there. Um, so I started writing, but I'm not going to share any of those songs with you, darling, though they are. <laughs> I have notebooks full of songs I wrote in high school, but not tonight. 
maybe we'll have an invitation only night or some it, like if you want I don't know I'll have to think of some way that I can share these songs without embarrassing myself if I think of it I will but this is the first song that I wrote that actually really was like yes you know this is a this is a real song you are a songwriter and I wrote it after I had because of all of this high school songwriting and all this encouragement so many people I had gone to New York to make it to make it oh dear not a, not a good idea and um, I was kind of taken in by the, this this advertising execs who wanted to become star makers and they wanted me to be the next Janice Ian. and so they put me in nightclubs and bars and places where I was absolutely not meant to be I was a farm girl from a country town in um, in um, Massachusetts I was writing these very heartfelt very deep teenage angst songs and also social justice songs I was it was just all bad I mean you can imagine how bad it was so I finally went left my tail between my legs very demoralized not knowing what to do with my life I was driving a, riding a, a Greyhound bus back up north um, and um, this song came to me as a complete gift which happens and some of you have probably experienced this something comes and comes through you and you just grab your pen and try not to lose the beat you know mm -hmm. and I wrote it on the bus on the back of an envelope and um, polished it up a little when I got home it's about childhood dreams and mm -hmm. wisdom wisdom that adults can give children when they need it I just realized I'm, I gotta move this down a little bit. I'm sorry, my voice is getting lower. When she was still too young to know a painter from a priest, her father took her Sunday walking in the windy street to get out of the cold. They chanced to find a gallery, and her feet danced up the stairs. She twirled about, and there, gaily, hanging gaily on the wall, the streamer saw a Dega dancer. Her booted feet were restless on the velvet carpet hall. She longed for satin slippers and a bar along the wall. She felt within her moving such an answer to this call. To float and twirl and spin like a leaf before the wind, or to fly to be free, born to be a Dega dancer. In her mind, she saw an empty stage with candelabras dim, a crowd of people waiting for the music to begin herself lifting the hearts of those who watched her twirl and spin oh the flash of gold and lace the look upon her face they'd remember in a dream for they had seen a Dega dancer still too lost in thought to feel the world rush by her father led her to the trolley told her not to cry there'll be other Sundays other paintings other dreams to try by the time that you are free 
you'll know what you are to be. But for now, it's time for tea. Don't look at me for the answer. It's up to you if you will be a Dega And it was not till a fair number of years later, when I was touring the United States with Kathy Winter, who I also want to pay homage to, my first singing partner. We were singing together around the country in Canada for eight, seven, eight years together. And we sang that song together. It's recorded on our album, which I have to show you because it's my first album ever, Sweet Sorcery. Some of you remember this, I'm sure. And we recorded Dega Dancer, and we were singing it on stage one night, and there I was living my dream. I was, we had an audience, we had bookings, we had, you know, a, a, we were going to record, we already had cassette tapes. I was happy. I was in my mid-twenties, I guess, late twenties. Bye, Hallie. Thanks for coming. It's great to see you. And I was living my dream, and I'm singing this poignant song about dreams that get that where my dreams got dashed and I just burst into tears which happens sometimes on stage I just lost it because I realized this song was a message in a bottle to myself it was my voice saying when you're freer when you're older when you're whatever you you will have your dream you will know what you want to be so I want to thank Kathy for those amazing years and sing a song that she and I sang together that some of you might know it's the title song of our recording, Sweet Sorcery. Anybody know Sweet Sorcery? Anybody go back that far? Eric does, yes. And Karen does. And if um, Shestam was here, she, she would be waving her hands wildly. Well, it's a really lovely song, and it was written, this was during the, um, well, 1975, 6, 7, right around in there, when, many of you will remember, there was a, a erupting women's cultural movement. And women were creating coffee houses, record companies, festivals, and saying, we, we're going to take, take this artistry into our own hands. Because as a young woman trying to, trying to get anywhere in the folk music world in the early 70s, um, it was very hard to get gigs in clubs, folk clubs. It was very hard to get gigs at colleges who had a robust college coffee house system. There was just they, all the people who ran them were men. And I hate to say it because there's wonderful men in this room and in our lives, but these guys, they were sexist and they were like, well, girls, we feel like girls can't really hold an audience and two girls together. Oh, God, Melissa and Janie strumming Puff the Magic Dragon. It's like, are you kidding? You know? So anyway, so all these women, including me and Kathy, were writing songs and, and going on tour and so forth. And this song is by one of our beloved sister songwriters, Terry Dash, and it's called Sweet Sorcery. It goes like this. If we can rhyme like poetry, if we can sing in sweet harmony, and if it rolls like the rise and see you'd best be ready for some sweet sorcery and what she was writing about what she's channeling here and you'll hear it is the utter exuberance that women artists and singers and songwriters felt at finally being able to sing about something besides men first of all we sang about each other we sang about our lives we sang about politics it was so liberating so that's what terry was capturing there if we you can try singing it with me it'd be really fun let me let me teach it to you it goes like this i'll sing a line you sing it back if we can rhyme like poetry ready if we can rhyme like poetry next line if we can sing in sweet harmony here we go if we can sing in sweet harmony and if it rolls like the rise and see ready and if it rolls like the rise and see you'd best be ready for some sweet 
sorcery you'd best be ready for some sweet sorcery tricky but the, the point is to dive in and sing honest to goodness here you are alone or with somebody who loves you who cares just dive in get you know get the spirit of it if not if not the right note i'll do a verse and then we'll sing that again now there's a rhyme that I have longed to find a certain syllable in syncopated time, a certain incantation for a troubled mind. I'd take that rhyme, that sweet and simple phrase. I'd take the sorry prose of all my present days and I would Dispatch out just like a flag unfurled, a little poem with which to tell the world that we can rhyme, try it, like poetry, and we can sing in sweet harmony. And if it rolls like the rising sea, you'd best be ready for some sweet sorcery. Now you and me were like the birds in flight, born on the wind, swept through the stormy night, and never sure what's in the morning light. But like those birds whose sweet and simple song declares the night must yield before the dawn. If we can raise our voices, make the rafters ring, we'll send this weary old world fandangoing. Cause we can rhyme in poetry and we can sing in sweet harmony. And if it rolls like the rising sea, you'd best be ready for some sweet. One more time. If we can rhyme like poetry, if we can sing in sweet harmony, and if it rolls like the rising sea, you'd best be ready for some sweet sorcery. You'd best be ready for some sweet sorcery. You'd best be ready for some sweet sorcery. What a great song. And I literally probably have not sung that song for 30 years. I don't know. What a great song. And you, you got to see, oh, it's not on YouTube. Um, you, got, you should hear the harmonies. Kathy and I did, did these cool two-part harmonies that were pretty, pretty neat. Two, because there were two of us, obviously. Oh, my goodness. So thank you, Kathy. And I want to just briefly also thank... Um, some, some singers and some spiritual teachers. Singers, Holly Near, huge influence. Thank you, Holly. May you be well. We're all aging. Our bodies are all not happy these days. May you be well. Pete Seeger. Ah, may you sing in peace. May you sing in power. Huge influence. Pete showed me how to lead a sing-along. That's what Pete Seeger gave me. How to get an audience singing. That man was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Issei Barnwell also and Sweet Honey, Bernice Johnson Reagan. Um, Sweet Honey in the Rock showed me how women could sing a cappella and exude power beyond any instrument. No instrument was needed. It helped me to start singing a cappella and um, their harmonies were incredible. I know they really influenced me and Kathy, so I, I really honor them. And my, some of my spiritual teachers, Matthew Fox. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him, Dominican priest who was um, kicked out of the priesthood by Cardinal Ratzinger or the Pope. Did he become Pope? Yeah, he did become Pope because uh, Matthew Fox consorted with pagans, Afro-Caribbean um, Yoruba practitioners, Native American spirituality, and he believed the earth was sacred and the Catholic Church was not having it. So he was kicked out. But he started an amazing program that I attended. It was a, a master's program in culture and creation-centered spirituality. And he taught that, um, and he drew on um, mystics like Hildegard de Bengen, who was an amazing composer from the 1100s, um, a woman who was in ill and in bed most of her life and wrote beautiful, beautiful music from that era. Um, and uh, Meister Eckhart, 
who has a beautiful quote about the darkness, which I can't find right now. So I'm not going to try. I'm not going to go there. But anyway, I thank Matthew Fox because he really offered an earth centered spirituality and teachers like Starhawk, who I also honor tonight. Um, and Buck Ghost Horse, my Native American teacher, Louisa Tish, Afro-Caribbean Yoruba practitioner, um, taught, taught me to move my pelvis and dance when I danced, <laughs> African dance and much more. So these are just influences that as I think back over my life, it's like, oh my goodness, who would I be? Who would I be without them? So lifting them up together, thank you. And any ancestors, any people you thought of during the meditation that you're grateful for, let's just raise our hands for a moment in thanks to elders, mentors, teachers, those who seep into our bloodstream and our brain cells and our hearts. And their words come through, to, through us, their wisdom comes through us, their music comes through us. Deep, deep gratitude to all of you. Mm. I want to do. I want to do this one. Another woman that I that I honor and thank, and have to stop talking so I can find my capo. I'm not home. I don't know where things are. There we go. Um, I want to honor a woman named Catherine Wanjohi. Many of you know that I took an eight-month sabbatical and went, um, got a grant to go around uh, the world, particularly Asia and Africa, parts of Asia and Africa. And my mission was singing with women. And, and more than that, my mission was learning from women about power. I've talked to, I know many of you have heard me say all this before, but just briefly for those who are not, um, not, not so familiar. Um, sorry, I have to find the song. Uh, I just felt like this was um, after Bush, when was it? It was during Obama, I believe. And, but anyway, there were things, I just wondered why are American women not out in the streets more? Why are we not doing work stoppages? And boy, do, now, that, now that we've had SCOTUS do their little number, um, you know, I'm still waiting. I'm still somehow waiting for us to, to do more, to, to really shut the system down, you know? I mean, there's a few things women can withhold that would really shut the system down. One is our labor, and the others you can just fill in your imagination. And there's more. So anyway, and I see women in these um, global South countries, very poor countries without the resources we have. The women don't have the legal freedoms that we have often. They don't have the financial freedom that we have. And yet they raise hell and they get stuff done. And I, I, I know I've talked about it before, but the Liberian women who stopped the civil war and um, just with their, their peaceful protest and their withholdings and their whatever. So anyway, I could go on and on, but I wanna thank Catherine as a representative of the international women that opened my eyes to how much women can do with very little. And I also opened my eyes to the incredible suffering of being in societies that don't have legal recourse for women who are being abused, trafficked, beaten, and so on. So this song was written in 2018, and it was inspired in part by the women around the world, but most particularly about the Me Too movement. And um, so it's called One Day You'll Know. You see me at the market stall, my baby's round my feet. Your pennies for a bag of fruit, that's one more day we'll eat. You see me at the brothel, two hundred shillings, make it short. You see me with your judging eyes, you never see my worth. Do you know I have dreams? Do you know I have ways? One day you'll know. You see me at the office. You joke and touch and tease. You promise that promotion for a little late night squeeze. 
but how little is a little and why should i weigh the cost how can a woman measure what she'll gain and what she's lost do you know i have dreams do you know i have ways one day see me scrubbing toilets and changing dirty sheets hustling your ham and eggs or hustling the streets or standing at the water cooler laughing with the rest swallowing that burning coal of anger in my chest do you know what we'd say if we knew we were safe do you know what it's cost do you know what we've lost do you know we have dreams do you know we have wings one day Thank you. It's the one I wrote when I turned 30. It's got an echo. This is also recorded on one of those early recordings. Some of you know it. I'm a gray-haired woman and I'm coming into my years. You say, coming into my years, that's it. I'm a weathered woman and I'm coming into my years, coming into my years. No more holding back, no more trying to please. Got the will and the power to get off my knees. I'm an aging woman and I'm coming into my years, coming into my years. And I wanna just be sure that the men know you are warmly invited to sing this. You too have a story. You too have a way that you can support the liberation of all beings by supporting women and supporting your own freedom from you know, all that, uh, what do you call it, patriarchal domination stuff. So let's sing this song as people who want freedom for all genders, all places, all times. Dedicated, by the way, to the young women and the women of Iran. I meant to say that. Freedom, what is it? Life, freedom, no, got it. Life, what are the three words? Something, life, and, power, and freedom. Anyway, the slogan from Iran. I had it written down. Jin Jayan Azadi, Women, Life, and Freedom. There we go. Okay, so here we go. I'm a streetwise woman and I'm coming into my pride. Coming into my pride. I'm a fight back woman and I'm coming into my pride. Coming into my pride. No more shrinking with fear when they whistle and jeer. I got a fist that's hard, got a mind that's clear. I'm a night walking woman and I'm coming into my pride, coming into my pride. And I'm a loud mouth woman and I'm coming into my voice, coming into my voice. I'm a talk back woman and I'm coming into my voice, coming into my voice. Oops, wow, these are different words than I'm used to singing. I guess I rewrote it. Okay, I'm gonna do these new words, they're really good. I can't believe I wrote them. I'm a loud mouth woman and I'm coming into my voice, coming into my voice. I'm a talk back woman and I'm coming into my voice, coming into my voice. I will not be silent and not stand by. Our world is too dangerous and the stakes are too high. I'm a shout out woman and I'm coming into my voice. I like that, yeah, all right. 
And this one I wrote in 19, I mean, 2016, when somebody, I think it was a, 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 someone named Trump, told someone named Hillary Clinton that she was a nasty woman. <clears throat> I'm a nasty woman and I'm coming into my power, coming into my power. I'm an in your face woman and I'm coming into my power, coming into my power. I got sisters to my left, sisters to my right, young folks up ahead, shed in the light. I'm a peaceful warrior woman and I'm coming into my power, coming into my power. And then I'm going to just for sake of time skip a few, but I'm going to hit the last one. I'm a loving woman and I'm coming into my own, coming into my own. I'm a heartbeat woman and I'm coming into my own, coming into my own. I'm going to go for passion, go for strength. Go for the moment and stay for the length. I'm a hot blooded woman and I'm coming into my own, coming into my own, coming into my own, coming into my own, coming into our own. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> it's another one I haven't sung for years. This is fun. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is just too much fun. Well, um, I want to say just a word about donations. This is a, a an event that has always been funded by donations. I've never charged a ticket price except when I had a guest artist who needed a ticket price. And um, what I, I just felt it in the spirit of what I learned through the Buddha Dharma, which is uh, the spirit of generosity and rec reciprocity that the, 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 the monks were not allowed to earn money. The nuns were not allowed to earn money. They were only, and they were not allowed to ask for food even. They would just go out with their bowls and stand. And the people out of their devotion for the teachings that they received from the monks and nuns would put food and, and sometimes money in their bowls. But the idea was that they, the teachings are priceless. The teachings are priceless. How can you put a price? on teachings that liberate the heart and the soul and the mind. <laughs> it's true. And I feel like music, that what music does is sort of priceless too. I, I hate putting a price on it, you know? Sometimes in the marketplace of capitalism, we do that, but it's, it's anyway, I just felt like, no, I just wanna kinda, I just wanna give it away, you know? And, um, and, and invite you to, to reciprocate if you want, because it's so joyful. Buddha taught that, that the greatest joy was generosity. And it's true if you've ever, given freely to someone who needed something or even to a cause it feels so good so that's the way we do this and many a night we actually donate the money to something we all care about like the, some of the elections in georgia ralph warnock first time second time i believe also um a lot and abortion funds lately we've been donating to the national abortion rights funds and so forth but tonight's just just nothing it's just we're not it's just for nothing you know i'm giving it to you i'm happy it makes me happy you're making me happy by being here you being here is a great gift and some people just are the kind of people that have to send something they just have to send a card and they just feel like well, i want to i want to donate something and i love those kind of people you're great so please feel free to make yourself happy however you like to do that. If it would make you happy to give a little birthday donation, feel free, but you know, don't think, don't think twice. If it's not your night, just let it go. It's not, it's not important and it's just sweet. So, okay, we're gonna do one more song. Oh, and I'm gonna read a really sweet blessing and then we're gonna sing one of my favorite lullabies that I wrote. And I want to say it in, in loving, loving, lovingness to my son, Matthew, who I wrote it for because he was afraid of the dark, as are many children. So this, this song was for him. But I want to just read you a little blessing from a woman named Yahara who came to this evening for a while back, back in the day. I haven't seen her for a while. I don't know if she made this up or where it comes from, but I love it. So I'm going to give it to you as a blessing, and then we'll sing all night long. May the magic and the alchemy of the sweet universe heal you, evolve you, and deliver you to the lush, 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 lush grace that has your name on it. 
your name on it. And it is so. Pretty cool. Okay, all night long. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the dark. Get rest. Look up the nap ministry on Instagram or online. Teresa, what's her name? Hershey has just written a book called Rest is Resistance. It's a, she's an African-American woman who has been leading nap gatherings for people of color, black people. She is in resistance to the what she calls the grind culture, the capitalist agenda of elevating work to an act of worship. And she's all about rest, the nap ministry. I meant to mention her. I think Liz is putting her in the chat. So all night long. I somehow feel like I need the words to this, even though I know it really well. I just have a feeling my memory wants me to have these words. Give me a sec. Okay, there we go. I think you have the words, maybe. Do you know the stars are singing?
just for you and for all of us. Uh, thank you. And happy holidays. Happy birthday next week. Happy birthday. birthday. Oh, thank happy you. birthday. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. They said it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs>